Hello. Test, test, check. Gonna be talking probably like this. My name is Cord Dengs and I compose stock music professionally. We are pioneers in this in a new line of music. Uh, it's stock music that is used and taken and used in commercials. And when you hear something in the background, it makes you feel a certain way. Um, making music has really just become a way of life for me, you know. It's it's kind of an escape. My name is Porch Berenger and I've been composing stock music for a living. It's an up-and-coming thing, you know, we've, uh, it's a difficult road to travel, but we've been blazing that trail for years. We are, we are truly the pioneers of this industry, you know, it's like, when you hear this, you know, you know, you just kind of know, it's getting you, it's getting you ready for a ride, you know, right? You hear, I mean, you felt that, you know, and that's kind of what we do is we, we take something like that and we apply it in stock music and like a, a lawyer say you know or, you know somebody needing it to have a sort of motivation and that's kind of what we do I, I started out with music about I don't know 20 years ago I was I think I was about six and my parents got me my first uh, piano uh, as a child and I got really good at that and uh, I just really loved the piano and I just kept kept uh, pursuing other instruments that were similar, like the uh, harpsichord, and uh, I even dabbled in MIDI a little bit uh, uh, in the college years. I was given a guitar at age one, and I, I'd have to say I mastered it around age two. I didn't meet chord until uh, college. We were actually both taking an upper division uh, intro to essentials class, and we just really connected in that class and, and we saw each other's music styles and and it was just like a match made in heaven really. You know, we was doing a we were in a classroom and taking a class together and you know it was I feel it was it was almost kind of spiritual. It was just on a spiritual level. And uh, it was just it was something that nobody could really put the, their finger in, you know. I was like, hey, I've got this band, you know, and you should join. And I was like, okay. And uh, thus, Chechnya was born. So tell us a little bit about the 80s and just what your experience was. We had been picked up by Rose City Records right before they did their 84 World Tour. And almost immediately after we had finished our first album and, and we had to go. Your first album, Hyperbole Strain? Um... We actually finished it in the van because Cleef had brought some of the equipment with us, you know, for possibly like recording live shows or you, whatever. You figured you would be able to record live shows on your first tour? Sorry, what? No, I just, that sounds kind of ridiculous. No. <laughs> I no. mean, nobody even knew who you guys were yet. How would you even know if you had an audience? No, we, we always thought that? it was a possibility that it could happen, so that's why we took it. All right. Anyways, Greetings came out in 87, and... And we followed that closely with Chechnya 3 and 88. And then when the 90s rolled around, we took a hiatus for a few years because Cord had two kids on the way and I wanted to focus on my solo career. Um, anyways, we didn't regroup until 94 when Discourage the Adopted came out. Right, right. Discourage the Adopted was a major success. Uh, that one went double ruby, I believe, right? It was such a commercial success that we were all able to finally retire at the ripe old age of 30. So it was just amazing that that happened. You know, it was, uh, it was hard at first because our particular music style was, it was almost too much for, for some people to handle and we ended up getting shut down by almost every record producer in the area. And, uh, you know, truly we were, we were struggling musicians, you know, not a doubt in my mind. You know, it was, um, Around that time that we really decided to take another route, um, yeah, Porch, Porch discovered the, the internet, so we created a, uh, an account on StockLeopard.com, uh, and uh, it was the most reliable site we could find, it didn't charge very much, uh, and you know, we just, uh, we really, we really hit it off, and 
we just fi we figured it out. We were uh, we were making around like 10 songs a week or maybe 20 and we couldn't have been happier. I guess the hardest part was, you know, the pay wasn't great, you know, and I just, I wanted to get that point across, you know, the pay was was quite awful actually. And, uh, but you know, we continued to do it anyway. You know, we dug deep, you know, that's just what we had to do. We kind of had this system where we would start with uh, like a title and just work our way backwards from there and that kind of became the writing formula for our band, Chechnya. Uh, our first big one was uh, Corporate Passion, uh, you know, played in the key of C, you know, and uh, it's kind of more for, for lawyers primarily, you know, just kind of the, the law enforcement even. And uh, yeah, that's, that's one of our bigger ones. And uh, another one um, is uh, Proportional Discharge. One of my favorite songs was called a Panther Squad. And it was actually more of an upbeat song. We really had a lot of fun making that one. Just, uh, and that one's got like 20 hits now or something like that. That was a that was an opening song that we often did. So this is um, this is my studio here. This is this is really where all all the magic uh, takes place. You know, I've got my speakers and my monitors and um, you know the MacBook Pro with GarageBand because that's really all you need nowadays. Uh, you want to see what I'm working on lately? I got something going on here. This is uh, it's kind of a an indie trance piece that um, was kind of inspired by uh, dinosaur noises. So well, we called it we called it Velasa Rave. The reality of it is, no one that's popular is actually a good musician. Like, in fact, I, I'm an awful musician, um, but I've made it this far just based on sheer will of power. Just the fact that we are doing this is a miracle in itself, and uh, people will buy our awful music because it just so happens that that is the standard right now. So we've kind of just fell into this good niche. niche, niche? niche in the in the 80s and and before that um, musicians actually had to be talented and had to have um, good singing voices and they had to be good at what they did in order to make it big in the music world and nowadays like that isn't a thing anymore like you can take anybody and make them good now with with the technology that's that's progressed um, it's amazing, and now what the producers do is they, they will use their technology to um, take awful musicians and turn them into good musicians so that they can then focus on that musician's look and image more than anything else in order to make more money. You know, it's, it's such a rewarding profession. You know, we get to wake up, get our coffee in, get our instruments, uh, make music, you know, then that other people can then download freely without giving us a single bit of credit. Uh, it's incredible, really. It's just like that, you know, you just, you just write what comes out of you naturally, you know, just, you just let it build up and just, and just let it spill out of you. Yeah, we've been, we've been trying to write more music lately that kind of goes back to our older styles from back in the Chechnya days. And, you know, we've got um, we've got tracks on every major stock site now. You know, like Stock Leopard, Bander Squanch, um, even Da Stock has some of our stuff as well. You know, it's. Uh it's been really hard for Porch. You know, he was our band member that just really added a kind of a special element. 
to all of us. You know, my heart just goes out to Cleef and his family, you know. They're not taking his dying very well, so, you know, we just want to write these songs to kind of commemorate him and, and just keep him in our memories through the use of song power. And it's just one of those things we really believe in with, with all of our hearts. We all kind of decided uh, after Cleef's passing, you know, we, that we just, we had to move on, you know. You know, we just, we had to completely forget about him. You know, and we all decided that, you know, it's, we had to forget about our passions, you know, who we loved, what made us happy. You know, it just, it came down to the music is the most important thing. You know, right and wrong kind of went out of the window at that point. And we take our, you know, we take our music and inject it into other people.